Alan Garner's sequel to The Weird Stone of Brisingerman. The Moon of Gumrath by Alan Garner Dramatised by David Wade To add enough, <laughs> Susan. I'm bursting. I'm not. I could eat it all over again. Oh, Colin. <laughs> Typical. Bless that boy. He must have hollow legs. No, I haven't. It's just they do such smashing fish and chips. Ah, well, I reckon you've had your fill, whatever you may think about oh, it. There. Anyway, it's high time we were getting home. Oh. Prince will be getting proper browned off standing there waiting for us. And everybody staring at him like they'd never seen a horse and cart before. Gowther, are you with us or are you here for the day? Dear old Bess, I can still see her. Her real mother hen, perched there on the edge of a chair, trying to make us move so she can get back to the farm and get on with the cooking. But Gowther's got his head in the paper and won't move, and my brother's eating so much he can't. <laughs> I remember thinking, when Mum and Dad get back from India, if they ever do get back from India... We'll be that fat they won't recognise us, to say nothing of our Cheshire accents. Funny, really. We'd only been there a year, but the farm and Bess and Gowther, they'd become like home to us. Of course, such a lot had happened, what with Firefrost and Cadellin. But all that was over. So it seemed. Gowther, are they coming or not? Hang on a tick. Just listen to this. You know yon hole they're digging in the road up by the Trafford Arms? What about it? Well, it says here they reckon they've found an old air shaft from the mines. An air shaft? In the village? But the mines are miles away. Oh, maybe, but they run for miles as well, as you ought to know. <laughs> Mind you, it could be just a well. They say there's a good few feet of water in it. Why don't we go and have a look? Now, that's just what I was going to suggest. Hey, I can see us never getting home at all. Only thing is, as long as I can remember, it's always been said there's a tunnel from the copper mines comes out in the cellars of the Trafford. Where's the shaft supposed to be, then? All I can see is the trench. Well, it must be somewhere here. Yeah. Aye. Aye, this looks like it, see? Yon bit of stonework sticking out. It's been broken. There's a hole in it. Well, of course it has. They had to see in somehow, didn't they? I don't know about seeing. It's pitch black. Yeah. Give me that bit of brick. Shh. Listen. Sounds exactly like a well to me. I happen you eat. Pity, though. Mm. I've always liked to think there was something in the old tale. Hey, well, I best be getting back, or Bess will make off with old Prince and the cart and leave the three of us with Shanks' pony. <laughs> Actually, guy that... If you don't mind, Colin and I thought we'd walk back anyway. Oh, aye. Off to the edge again, is it? I'd have thought you'd have had enough of Alderley Edge to last you a lifetime. Oh, but we'd like it. Well, if you're that set on going, you mun go. But think on you come straight home. And don't go getting caught there in the dark. We don't want you down them mines again. OK, we'll be careful. Bye, Gowther. Bye. Bye. The trouble with Gowther and even more with Bess, was they would keep worrying. Mind you, I can see why. Anyway, we took the low road out of Alderley, and then the path to Hollywell, and stood and looked at it, and wondered why we couldn't make the gates into Funding Delve open, and why we never saw Cadellin. And I said perhaps it was because the Morrigan was back in business. And I said rubbish. How could she be when she'd been turned into a crow? And then suddenly it was sunset, and time to go home. Why do we have to come this way? It's quicker. We're nearly at the top. Oh, it's getting pretty dark already. Say, isn't there an old quarry along here? Best watch out for it. It's down there. It's all right. Oh, it's really dark down there. Wait a minute. What's that? Where? Down there. Or the end of the quarry. Left of the dead tree. It's all just blackness to me. Yes, but there's something even blacker. It's moving. I see it. Climb 
jumping up the side. Right. What is it? I don't know. It's gone. What has it? Maybe we're just saying things. No, we're not. <sighs> Unless things that don't exist have two red eyes. Oh, Lord. Let's get out of here. <sighs> wait, wait a minute. Stop. What for? I think there's something up in the trees as well, following us. I can't be. What the heck? An arrow. By your left foot. Move not a sinew of your sinews, not a vein of your veins, not a hair of your heads, or I shall send down of slender oak and darts enough to sow you to the earth. Who is that? There, in the trees, not higher. What do you think you're playing at? You nearly hit us with that thing. <laughs> oh, the donut. Oh, the holy mother. Is it a child of men that can speak so to Atlendor, Lord of Elves? <laughs> and I, Uthakar Hornskin of the Dwarves, do love you for a talk. <laughs> what was that I said about it all being over and done with? Suddenly, right out of the blue, and just when we were sure it never would, everything started up again. Up in the fork of an old birch tree stood this tiny little, well, Man, I suppose you'd have to call him, not four feet tall, with a real Mediterranean tan against a gleaming white tunic. It was almost dark by now, but his hair shone all silver and his eyes all yellow. Oh, I didn't like those eyes. They made me think of goats. And when he said about sowing us to the earth, well, it looked as if we'd better believe him. And then, as if that weren't enough, just beside us on the ground... Looking as if he'd that minute popped out of it. And there was this dwarf, like a little barrel on legs, with a face like an enormous walnut. And red hair and a black patch over one eye. And before he'd even finished speaking, a horseman, all in black, comes thundering out of the trees, reins his horse in, like they do on the films, and bolts to the ground. Oh, oh. Boom. Alvarak, well met and greetings. What news? Not good. Lord Atlenda, we have found the blackness, but it is free of the wood to the south and moving too fast for me. Your horsemen have it in sight still, but they are not enough. Hurry! I go. Alvarak, teach my will to these children of men. Uthika, are these the ones? So it would appear. A girl, a boy. Then we should find Cadellan. What exactly is going on? What does it all mean? What it means will take some telling. And the place for it all is inside Fundendelve. So let the four of us go there together. And in five minutes, there we were, back in Fundendelve again. Nothing much had changed. There were the sleepers sleeping beside their milk-white steeds. The only difference, really, was that Firefrost was safe back in its niche. No Cadellan, though. He'd gone to help at Lendor. Him that nearly shot us in the woods. It turned out this at Lendor was king of the elves. And Uthakar was very rude about him because dwarves and elves can't stand each other, seemingly. Anyway, the king's will was that I ought to lend him my bracelet, the one and carried golden hand had given me, and told me to wear always. Albanac... That was the horseman. Albanac said that the elves were in deep trouble... And they thought the mark of Fola... That's what they call Sue's bracelet. Well, they thought the bracelet might help them. I didn't really want to lend it, unless I went north with it too. So, in the end, I said that the king at Lendor could try it out here in Fundindelve. And that was when Uthakar the dwarf said two things that made the pair of us sit up. Generously done, girl. And yet I cannot help but think it is unwise to put off all the armour that you have against the Morrigan. The Morrigan? Is she around again? She has been seen, eh, Almanac? There you are, Sue. I told you. She has been seen, but only in the north. Thus far. Though something else is here. The Brolachan. Yes, but we can take our chance on that. It will have fled far south by now. What was that you said? The Brolican. The Brolachan. What's that? Ah, there you are. It is not exactly anything. It has eyes. Red eyes and a mouth. But no speech, no shape, and it is blacker than blackness itself. It is one of the old mischiefs of the world, which long ago brought terror to the plain, till it was captured and confined within a pit at the foot of the edge. Aye, though now by some mischance it has escaped. Here, say that again. Something blacker than black, with two red eyes, and which used to be... Greetings to you, the car. Greetings. Greetings, all the night. Cadellan, well met. Colin, Susan, 
I'm glad to see you, but why are you here? Albanac, why have you gone behind me in this? It is not as you put it, Cadellan. Atlendo stopped them in the wood, and after that the best course seemed to be to bring them here and tell them of his need, which I have done. Susan has agreed to let him test the mark. I have the bracelet here. Ah, Susan, that is noble. But is it prudent? You echo my own fear, Cadellan. Atlendo will not keep it long, two days at most, and the Morrigan is still far off. Well, perhaps I am too fearful. Susan, Colin, don't be angry when I say this. Happy as I am to see you for yourselves, it remains against my wishes that you are here. But why? You were always... I know, I know. You think I have abandoned you. It's not so. I avoid you, and I do it for your own safety. That's ridiculous. Listen to me, Susan. Listen, both of you. Understand that there is danger to you not only from evil, but from the realm of the high magic itself, in which I and my companions mostly live. That can't be dangerous. You speak like that because you do not know. In all magic lie wild forces which can destroy those not acquainted with such things. Do you understand me? I think so, more or less. There is no more I can say in any case. And it's high time you went home. My good friend Gowther and his lady will be anxious for you. Uthaka, see them safe to the farm. It's all right, we know the way. But Uthaka will go with you for all that. I don't know how, but Bess and Gowther seem to guess straight off that Colin and I have been up to something. So what with that and the weather, all muggy, the atmosphere around the farm was a bit tense. Colin was all right because he got his head stuck into a book, but I was restless. So it was a relief when in the afternoon it brightened up a bit and I wandered off across the fields up to the old flooded quarry. It was quiet there, and the water was still as still. So I just sat thinking about Cadellin and Fundin Delve, wondering if that black thing we'd seen could possibly have been the Brolican, or whatever the name was, and whether it had anything to do with the hull outside the Trafford Arms. Then all of a sudden it was getting on for tea time. I got up and started home. Oh, who are you? Come here, come on. That's the way. Whose pony are you? Somebody's that's for sure with that lovely shiny black coat. Yeah, and such nice soft ears, hey? Oh, you like that, don't you? Oh, yes. It's steady, you'll knock me over. That's more like it. <laughs> right, that's enough love for one day. I've got to go now. So I'll come back and see you tomorrow. Go away, okay? Go on. Oh, well, if you insist on following me, carry on. I won't get you anywhere. Hey, do you mind? That's me you're nibbling. I've got nothing for you if that's what you're hoping for, OK? This is it. This is where we part company, cos I'm getting over this style, so you can just hop out of my way. Out of the way, will you? <laughs> what are you doing? What is it? Oh, I see. You want me to ride you, is that it? Well, I don't mind. Just once round the field, stand still a minute. There's a good boy. Right. Oh, we're up. <laughs> hey! Hey, take it easy! Slow down! Stop! I can't stop, I tell you! Oh, now the quarry! Turn, you! Turn, you brute! Turn! You won't! I have to get off! Susan will get her own tea when she comes in. Hey, what's me doing? Tap. There's one or two things to be seen to before it rains. It can't be far off now. Someone's got to bust. I'll be right glad when it does. I can I get me breath today. Did Susan say she'd be late? Oh, no. She was only going as far as the old quarry. Edmund's quarry? You should have said. Hey, up. What? Gotten into him. Hey, 
scamp, that'll do. No, but you should have said, Colin, that quarry's dangerous. There's 13 foot of water if there's an inch. Oh, drop that now. Scamp, that'll do now. Whatever's to do with you? You're soaking wet. I knew it. She mun have fallen in. Oh, Susan, what were you thinking after go and do that? Sue, you're not hurt, are you? Sue, she's in a state of shock, if you ask me. And look at all that mud. Here, what you need is a nice hot bath, then bed. And then we'll see what's what. <laughs> The storm broke just after Bess got Sue into bed. She was looking pretty grotty, but I didn't let it bother me much at the time, to be honest, because I borrowed this fantastic book from Gautha, and I just sat down in the nice warm kitchen at the table and got stuck into it. Gautha said he'd never read it, and I can see why. It was massive and all in old handwriting, but that book was full of everything. Parish surveys... Bits of local history, even a bit that might have been about the blacker than black brolican. But the best bit was a diary kept by some rector of Olderly who seemed to have spent most of his time tramping round the countryside and writing down the legends about it, including a good few I could have told him weren't exactly legends. Anyway, I got so interested, I didn't really notice the storm or anything till Bess came back in. Gowser, I don't like it. The lass in her asleep, but she won't say a word. No. I, I've given her a couple of hot water bottles, but she's still as cold as a frog. And then she just lies there, stirring at nout. And her eyes have gone all queer. You want to go for the doctor, do you reckon? What, in this rain? Nay, it ain't that bad. But if things are no better in the morning, we'll have him in and sharpish. Aye. Now I'm thinking it's time we were all off to our beds. I lay awake quite a while, listening to the storm and wondering about Sue. I'd seen her face and I was worried now, all right. Anyway, I must have dropped off eventually, because I woke up all of a sudden and for no reason I could put my finger on. I jumped straight out of bed and went to the window. The wind had died and the rain had stopped. It was a gorgeous moonlit night. And there, just going out of the stable yard and into the field opposite, was Sue, still wearing her pyjamas. I hanked on my shirt and trousers, jammed my feet into some shoes and tiptoed down the stairs. The front door was still bolted, so she must have dropped out of her bedroom window, and that was what had woken me. I eased the bolts, went out into the yard, and there she was, halfway up the hill, walking very fast but in a funny sort of way, like gliding. I didn't need to be told where she was heading, Heyman's quarry, and I knew I had to stop her. I ran till I thought I'd blow up, but when I got to the edge of the cliff, she wasn't anywhere in sight. Sue! Where are you? Sue! Sue! Flipping heck! How did you get down there? Right, don't move. Stay absolutely still or you'll fall off that ledge. Listen, I'm going to lie down and I'm going to stretch down to you. Got it? Right. Now, a bit more. Your hand, I said. What was that thing? Sue, what are you playing at? Okay, okay, let's try again. Can you hear me? Sue! Oh, what are you doing? Don't stand up. Are you crazy? Listen to me, Sue. It's me, it's Colin. Look at me! Help! Help! It's Anna Roth! It's Anna Roth! Another slice of bread. Colin? Um, no thanks. It seems like you lost your appetite. And your tongue. Go with her, listen. We mun have the doctor. That lass is wet through again and her hair's all full of sand, just like it was yesterday. And she's still saying no. Great. I'll get Prince saddled up and I'll be off to the phone box. 
Uh, Colin, she hasn't said anything to you, has she? No, I, I did go in, but but all she did was smile. Well, I suppose that's better than nothing. Colin? Here, you're not catching it, whatever it is, are you? Hmm? Oh, I'm fine. Oh, you look proper done in, if you ask me. I'm all right, I promise. Well, I hope so. I'd best go change your sheets. To tell you the truth, done in was putting it mildly. I was scared stiff. How I got back to the farm, I couldn't even remember. I just came to in the morning, and there I was in bed, and I still had my shirt and trousers on. After breakfast, I decided there was only one thing for it. Go and find Cadellin. So while Gautha was harnessing Prince and Bess was dealing with Sue Sheets, I slid out of the yard and down the lane towards Alderley Edge. I'd just got out of sight of the house when striding down the hill toward me, his sword and his buckles gleaming in the sunlight and his big black cloak billowing behind him was the best sight I ever saw. Albanac. I couldn't get the words out fast enough. Is it steady, Colin? Steady. You say, the hand she gave you felt as if it were a hoof. Yes, and her eyes had turned all red, as if they were going to burn me. That's when I ran. And this morning? No, they're brown again, but sort of, sort of horrible. Yes, this is matter indeed. I think I have not the power to do what should be done, but I must try. And now, before the chance is lost, listen to me. Can we enter the house without she or anyone should see us? Yes, I think so. Then we must. And we must go directly to her room, but silently. When we approach, do you enter without guile or hesitation? Go to the window, fling it open wide. I shall follow you. What are you going to do? I have the mark of Fola. I have brought it back from the Lord Atlandor. Oh, yes, I know now I ought never to have taken it. But now we must replace it on her wrist. Well, that shouldn't be too difficult. Colin, listen. She will resist us like a tigress. Forget she is your sister. Grapple with her as if she were your sworn enemy, for at this moment, such she is. This is her room. Then you go in, without guile, remember. Sue! Whew. Stuffy in here. Now, see, sir. Oh! Stay, stay! What are you doing? It's me, Cohen! And open her! Spare your breath and pin her other arm. Hold her! Hold her! Well done! Now, the bracelet! Well done! Now get out! Don't argue! Get out of the room! Albert. Quiet. That's it. Can we go in now? By no means. She is free, but now we must beware. Look! Under the door! Smoke! Her room's on fire! No, no. As you value your life, stay by me. Power of wind have I over thee. Power of wrath have I over thee. Power of fire have I over thee. Power of thunder have I over thee. Power Over of... The eyes! It's the red eyes! Hide your gaze! Power of lightning have I over thee! Power of storms have I... Ah! I cannot hold it! Get behind me! Stand clear of my sword! Essen! Essen! Emerys! To the door. Split to match wood. And your sword? The blades. All burnt away. Let us go in. Sue? Sue! She's asleep. It is Sue, isn't it? It is now. Susan! Are you all right, lass? Oh, Lord, it's Gautha. I'm Bess. What are we going to say? I'll leave that to me. What? Oh, oh no! Oh! My God, look at the state of this. Even the wind is smashed. I've never seen such a mess. Hold the noise, lass. Let's be getting to the bottom of this. Now, maester, who might thou be and what's all this? My name is Albanac, and this, Farmer Mossack, was the Brolachan. The what? Colin knows a little of the creature. 
he will tell you. As for me, I have work to do, and swiftly. Let Susan sleep, and see to it the bracelet stays upon her wrist. Her safety hangs upon it. I am going for Cadellan. Oh, Colin, I knew you two were up to something. I just knew. What I want to know is, if Susan's not but sleeping, like you make out, then why can't any of us wake her? I'm a mussock I've been trying to explain. Her body sleeps, but she herself is no longer in it. But if that's the truth of it, then, then how did she get out? Where is she? Aye. Yeah, and if you're the magician you're supposed to be, why can't you get her back again? My good friends, I can only answer one half of your questions. Albanac here came in time and drove the brolican from her, and that is a great mercy. For had it stayed, it would have withered her like a lily in the frost. Now when it fled, although it did no other hurt, the power of its going drove her from her body. That much I can tell you. But where she is, it lies beyond my power to see. We shall have to call on other powers to find her. Hmm. Wait a minute. How long is all this caper going to last? I cannot say. But it will not be short. Weeks. Perhaps even months. Well, that settles it. It's the doctor for a reet here and now. I was going for him anyway when that there Mr. Albanac turned up. Mr. Mossack, leave it yet a little longer. I do beg of you. My mind's made up. For one thing, how, how are we supposed to feed the lass? Listen to me. We shall take care of her. My friend, I promise you the worst thing you could do is what you plan. This matter is not for mortal skills. Go our way, or Susan's danger will increase. Well, I'll be straight with you. I don't like it, but I've seen enough of you to trust you. So, unless Susan takes a turn for the worst, I'll do nought about the doctor. Any road not for the next three days. Three days? There's little we can do with that. Ah, well, I wouldn't know, but that's the way it is. Then we must go with it. Colin... Be at Golden Stone at noon tomorrow. Oh, right. There is something Susan will be needing. Colin! Here we are! Hello, Albanac. Hello, Ithaca. I was expecting Cadellin. He is searching. How is Susan? Much the same. What's this thing she's going to need? I have it. Here. Wine from the table of Anne Harrod Golden Hand. Wet your sister's lips with it each morning. There will be no need of other food. That's great. But look, you are going to find Susan, aren't you? I mean, why can't Cadellin see where she is? Isn't he strong enough? There is no one stronger. Well then... Ah, let me say now what is in my mind. I am thinking he will never find her. Oh, no! And since he speaks of calling up other powers to help him, he himself has recognised as much. Come now, Uthaka. Are you so soon discouraged? That is not the question. My thought is that the high magic of Cadellan is too... too keen for the present task. How can it be that? Why, in the same way that a fine blade will carve an ornament, but will not serve to fell an oak. The Brolachan is of the old evil, cunning and yet mindless. Cadellan's magic is more subtle. It cannot come to grips with what is coarse. Therefore, for the old evil, we need the old power. Right. The old magic, exactly so. Aye, but Uthaka, what old magic is there now? Oh, you know the answer to that. It sleeps, it is not dead, so let us rouse it. Listen, it has come to me that by the law of the old magic, the strongest power of all against ill times lies in the mothen. What is the mothen? It is a plant. A plant? What does it look like? Where does it grow? I'll find it. Aye, it would take such purpose as I see in you. But wait, it is a magic plant. It grows only on the heights of the old straight tracks and flowers only in the full of the moon. Aye, and worse than that, only by full moonlight can track and flower be seen at all. But it's a full moon tomorrow night. So where's the old straight track? Ah, now there's the question. Colin, there are many old straight tracks. All built before the time of dwarves or even wizards. 
We do not know their purpose, and even if we did, all of them are lost. Then how am I to find one? There must be a way. Aye, for you there may. This is the old magic. Believe in it. Believe with all the faith and resolution that I see in you, and like enough it will reveal itself. How do I start? There is but one way. Search your mind. Think constantly of Susan. Keep your courage high. But now go home. Be here tomorrow at this hour, and maybe we shall all have better news. Oh, I'll be here. Goodbye. Pray he may succeed. I do not altogether like this, Uthika. You speak of waking the old magic, but what if we should do that in truth? I spoke of rousing it. No. We shall make it stir in its long sleep and use it for our need. No more. I hope so. The eve of Gomrath is too close for my liking. It is yet two days hence. Something tells me our young friend will find the way for us before tomorrow's noon. I absolutely knew I'd read about it somewhere. The old straight track, I mean. And then, all of a sudden, it came back to me right in the middle of our tea. We were all sitting there, pretending to eat, but much too worried, really. When I had this brainwave... I just ran out of the room, up the stairs, and grabbed the old book of Gathers from my bookshelf. I found the bit where they copied out this old rector's diary, and there it was, October 17th. This day, I and walked the, the lane, an, an old, old straight trackway, trackway made, made by, by our rude, rude forebears, I'm forced to believe, prior to the coming of the antique Roman to these shores. I followed this road from Mobley to the edge, guided only by the frequent mounds and stones which are all that now remain to indicate the way. Of these, the beacon mound and golden stone are the most remarkable upon the edge itself, and from the latter, where I terminated my excursion, it seemed the trackway was aligned towards the peak of Shining Tor which stands nine miles distant in the direction of Buxton. The beacon, golden stone and shining tor. So that was it. Bingo! Next day, at twelve o'clock precisely, there I was at golden stone. And when I told him, Uthaka got so excited, I thought he'd explode. Oh, I knew it, Albanac, I knew it! The old magic has quickened to our need, and Colin, you were the one to quicken it! Oh, a straight track, under our very noses! Let us meet on Beacon Hill just after sundown, and pray the night be clear. Albanac said nothing much, but looked as if he was thinking a lot. Anyway, I went off home, and oh, brother, did that afternoon go slowly. But after about twenty-five years, the sun went down and I made off for Beacon Hill. We are fortunate in the night, but then I knew we should be. Strange memories linger on this hill. Aye, but only memories, Albanac, and shall so remain. I say, Ithaca, how am I to know the mothman when I see it? You will find it growing among rocks alone. Its roots are red, it mirrors the moon, and there are five points to its leaves. Now, when you find it, as you surely will, take only the flower and a few leaves. See you do not harm the root, nor take all the leaves. And, Colin, when you pick the moth in, place it in this small leather bag. OK, I get it. Hey, isn't it dark already? I haven't made a mistake, have I? Where's the moon? Oh, you have your back to her. She is behind Shining Tor now. She will be up directly. Albanac, come. Colin, good luck. Hang on. Where do you two think you're going? Not far. But when the track appears, your foot alone should be upon it. Listen. Listen to that. Oh, and look. Look. The track. The straight track. Then run, boy. Run, do not waste a moment. Which way? Eastward to the hills. Run or it will pass. And fortune follow you. Run, O oh child of time. Now, out of time, run. 
See how woods and fields and streams and heather flow like quicksilver beneath your feet. Faster, faster, up now, up over moorland, over rock and crag. Behold the tor, the shining tor. Now go back, go back into time. Where am I? What's happened to the track? Gone. All gone with the slanting of the moon. Turn your head and search among the rocks. <gasps> the Mothin! The Mothin. Take it. Take the flickering glowworm flower and go. 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 Am I going the right way? Well, the moon's behind me, so it's got to be. How far to the farm? Miles. And no old straight track, worse luck. Oh, but I've got the moth and little sister, and I'm on my way. What's that? Oh, don't say there's someone following me. Oh, there is, you know. Who's there? That's all I needed. Now what? Not much choice, have I? Oh, no. Someone's coming the other way. What the heck am I going to do? Wait a minute. It could be... I think it is. Colin. Oh, thank the Lord. Albanac. Oh, I thought to find you hereabouts. Have you the muffin? Yes. Praise be. Get up behind, then. Cadellan waits for us by Susan's bed. Give me your hand. <sighs> Why, Colin, you're wet as dew and trembling. Is anything amiss? Not now. Back there, I thought I was being followed. Followed? Oh, and Melinda's think so too. Oh, I fear the old magic has done more than stir. Ah, oh, well. Now, hold tight to me. Oh, Colin. Colin, we were that worried. Creeping out of the house like that in the middle of the night and not so much as a word. Well, that'll do, lass, that'll do. We know why he did it, and it was for the best. Did you get what you went for, Colin? Yes. And are you all right? I'm fine. Then that's all that matters. Cadellan, here's the mothin. Take it. No. It is the old magic. It will not bend to me. Uthaka, you take it, or, or Albanac. No, it will not hear us either. Colin, you are the one who found it. It will move for you. What do I have to do? Fold the flower within the leaves and place it in your sister's mouth. Okay. I can't get her teeth open. I'll do it. If you can open old Prince's mouth, you can open anything. Right. Got it. Now what? We wait in silence. Nothing is happening. Shh, lass. Hark. What's that? Folk hunting at this hour? Be still, all of you. Susan, what's she doing? She's going to spit it out. The Mothin, she will spew it. Colin, smite her hard across the back. Well stuck. Where am I? What's this awful place? I must get out. I must get free. Kellerman! Kellerman, help me! Stop her! Hold her! Shut the window! I can't! Susan, stop it! You'll fall out! Kellerman! Sue, so it's me, Colin! Stay! Stay for me, Kellerman! I was having such a job to stop Susan falling out, I couldn't think of anything else. But when I did happen to look up and see what she was shouting at, I nearly let go of her and went head first myself. It was as if about a million stars had come down out of the sky and turned themselves into the shape of nine girls. Did I say girls? They were enormous. And on enormous horses too, with hawks the size of eagles on their wrists, and these gigantic hounds beside them, and the whole lot were milling in the air around the farm. It was like the most amazing Guy Fawkes night you've ever seen. Then the horn blew again, and they all turned and poured away into the sky, like Halley's Comet. And that left Sue just leaning out of the window in a sort of daze, with tears pouring down her cheeks. Oh, Kellerman, why have you forsaken me? Why? You 
link your bracelet into mine. It was mine. And we were riding to Kerrygore. Kerrygore? Oh, we're in deep waters now. She's ridden with the Shining Ones, the Daughters of the Moon. It's well you found the Moth and Colin. For had they brought her to Curry Gore, no magic in the world would have returned her. Yet here she is. Susan? Susan, wake now. Wake and look at me. Catalin! Hello, everyone. What are you all doing here? It's been happening. Oh, Susan, thank goodness. Well, I don't know. He can't be much of a doctor, that one. He <laughs> swears there's nothing wrong with you and you can get up whenever you like and have something to eat. Bloody! But think on, no lark in mind. Colin, you keep an eye I'll on it. I'll be good, don't worry. Uh, I'll believe that when I see it. Any road, come down when you're ready. And in the meantime, I'll be doing you a nice fresh egg. <laughs> Oh, my, I'm hungry. Are you really all right? I'm fine. Listen, while I'm dressing, you can tell me about this old straight track. Oh, and the brolican. Well, OK. But, Sue, listen. Last night, outside the window, did you... Did you see what I saw? Depends what you saw, doesn't it? Sue, who is Kellerman? I'm... I'm not quite sure. Oh. You see... After you'd been put to bed, I heard Cadellin talking to Albanac, and he said you'd meet Kellerman again. Did he really? Yeah. But everything in its time, he said. What does that mean? He didn't say. But there was another thing. Did I tell you someone followed me from Shining Tor? No. Well, someone did. And Albanac was talking about that too. He said the hunter was on the road. What hunter? I don't know. But last night, after everything was over... I couldn't go to sleep, and I heard steps in the yard, so I looked out and I saw this shadow. What of? Well, it was a man, except... except he had antlers. Sue, Cadellin and Albanac seem to think this old magic, as they call it, may have woken up. What do you mean, woken up? I'm not sure. Well, I don't expect it matters. But listen, I'll tell you what. This afternoon, let's go and look for Albanac. I want to ask him what Lord Atlender did with my bracelet, if anything. And then... On the way home, we can climb up the beacon and you can show me where you saw this old straight track. OK. There won't be anything to see, though. We found Albanac easily enough, but as far as we could make out, the bracelet hadn't been a lot of use to the Lord at Lendor. He couldn't make it work for him, which was pretty hard to take when you think of what had happened to Sue because of lending it. So what next? Should she go north with Atlendor? And if so, how to fix it with Gather and Bess? And by the way, what had happened to the brolican since it said goodbye to Sue? And so on. Cadellin wasn't there, and we just talked round and round and didn't get anywhere. We didn't leave Fundendelf till just before sunset, and on the way home, Sue was in a funny, jumpy, narky sort of mood. Right, so here's the beacon. Where's this track? That way. Oh. I told you there was nothing to see. I'll say. Well, maybe if we hung around till the moon rises, then we'd see it. Well, we might do. Then let's do that. Oh, soon, no. Haven't you... Why not? It's nearly dark already. Maybe, but Bess and Gowler... So what? They know where we are. I know, but... Well, I'm staying anyway. It's too cold. In that case, we'll simply have to light a fire. Sue, listen, this is crazy. You got any matches? You have. I know you have. You always carry them. Here you are. Why are you going on like this? Like what? Look, we're not going to set the whole edge on fire, are we? Right then, there's masses of twigs here. I'll get them going. You fetch more. All oh, right. <laughs> hey, that's terrific! I knew they'd catch. We're going to need some proper wood. Come on! Hang on a mo. There's something wrong. Oh, there isn't. There is. This fire's cold. Rubbish. That's because the wind's blowing it away from you. No, it's not. It isn't giving any heat at all. Feel! Who now brings the wind fire of the Rowan to our mound upon the eve of Gomrath? Who are you? Ha! He asks us who we are, my brothers. We are the three horsemen of dawn. We are the Einheer. 
over here laughing. What do you want? What we want, we partly have. Our freedom from the mound that buried us. Now we ride and you with us. Sue, run! After them, my brothers. Seize them! By golly, they did. We hadn't gone three yards when this huge, great man just whipped me off my feet with one hand and dumped me like a sack of onions across the neck of his horse. I could just see Sue, and another of them had done the same to her. She started to bash him with her bracelet, but all he did was grab her wrist and look at it, then sit her up in front of him. I tried bashing mine, but all he did was twist my arm behind me. I was glad he sat me up. Not just because it was more comfortable, but because it was the most incredible sight. We tore along like the US cavalry, but twice as fast, until we reached another mound. We pulled up, and the leader went in front of us and threw his spear into the trees on top of it. They burst into flames that didn't burn anything. The spear flew back into his hand, and another three enormous horsemen rode out of the fire. And off we went again to another mound. The spear flew and came back again. The flames roared into the sky, and a massive great armed man came out of the trees. I ride, I ride. Another ride, another mound. The spear, the flames, and two armed men. We ride, we ride. We came to one more mound. It was the same, and there were three men. We ride. We ride. That made twelve in all, and everybody wheeled away and simply tore across the countryside. Till all of a sudden, in what seemed like about a year, there we were, back at the beacon. It was still blazing, and the leader just rolled into the flames and right up to the top of it. He touched the ground with the point of his spear, and there it was, the old straight track, flowing from the point like water, no, more like molten metal, all red through the trees and out of sight. Wakeful is he in the hill of dawn. Wakeful is he to the flame of the gollering. From the heat of the sun and the cold of the moon. Am I not he that is called Golaxa? Am I not a prince in darkness? Get and hear the torment of the battle. I stared along the track, and there, miles away, I saw this really huge man. He was running towards us, but he ran so easily, it made it look like flying. First, I thought he was wearing some sort of mask, cross between a human and a deer. But as he got close, I realised it wasn't a mask at all, and his enormous antlers grew straight out of his head. He ran right through the ring of horses, sprang onto the top of the mound, and stood there in the flames, sort of pulling them into him somehow, till they died down. Then the horses knelt to him in the moonlight, and all the riders. They raised their arms. Hail Gavir, hail Gossa, Lord of the I found I didn't want to look at him, but at the same time, I did, as if he was someone I'd known all my life. It is long since Windfire kindled the Gollering. What men had remembered the eve of Gomrath? Let me look at them. Lord, they are here. Children. <laughs> but this is no way to carry one who has done a service. Sit up, my son, sit up. Here, I will lift you. <sighs> Why do you stare so? <laughs> Lord, there is this upon the girl's wrist. Show me. The mark of Folger. Lady, 
They have knelt to me. Now let me do as much to you. Set your hand upon my brow. There. It is done. Come then, both of you. Before I quite knew what was happening, he lifted me in one arm, picked up Sue in the other, jumped to the top of the beacon and put us down on it. Then he turned and ran between the horses. Right now, ride and hear of the Helethin! We ride, we ride, we ride! Sue! That's what I saw at the farm, the antlers! That's the hunter! Of course it is. What do you mean, of course? Sue, what's the matter? Why did he kneel? What's happening to me? No, that was bravely done. Who's that? Oh, it's Uzika. Oh, thank goodness. Uzika! <laughs> You're not Uzika. Who are you? What you see. But the real question is, how shall we undo all this? Have we done something wrong? <laughs> wrong? None but fools would bring fire to Beacon Hill at any time, but when would on the eve of Gomrath? Ha! Oh, but come, we must see what your new friends will do. It may not be too late to coop them in their mounds again. Follow me. Where are you taking us? We'll never find them now. Oh, trust me, they have not gone far yet. But we don't even know who they are. The hell laughing, the wild hunt. That is what you have sent out on us. Where they ride, only the raven prophets. My guess is they are gathering at Hollywell, and pray they have not yet drunk of it, for then I do not know of any who will lay them once more to their rest and keep us from the old magic. Now, this is where our ways divide. Uh, Susan, go with all speed to Cadellin. Tell him the hair laughing ride. Colin, come with me to spy on Hollywell. We shall meet Cadellin there. What, girl? You kindled Windward and the beacon on the eve of Gumrath? Cadellan, the fault is not theirs. They did not know. That's right. We didn't, honestly. No. It is mine. I ought to have foreseen. But it is done, and now what matters is the hunt is out, and we must be on their track. Well, that shouldn't be too difficult. Colin will have seen where they went. Colin? Why, yes. Where have you left him? He's all right. He went down with this other dwarf to Hollywell. Other dwarf? What other dwarf? Don't you know him? He was terribly like you, but dressed in black. In black? With ornaments of gold? Yes. I think so. It was hard to see. By the mothin! Run, all of you, to Hollywell! <laughs> They're not here. As I expected. Uthaka! Who is this dwarf? The worst you will find from sea to sea. Pelis the False. No good has brought him south to Alderley. And the hunt has come to Hollywell and gone again, having drunk of it. Albanac, there is now something more pressing of our attention. Friends, there is a mind at work against these children. So much is certain. And what are we to do? Think. Think and hope. I would rather seek and find... Work your magic, Cadellan, but there may be more use in eyes and steel. I am thinking the death of Pelis is in my sword. Well, go if you will, but beware of the night. Fare you well. Aye, farewell. Now, Susan, as for you, you must go at once to Fundindelv and remain there. Albanac will accompany you. But I can't do that. I must do something to find Colin. Leave that to Uthaka. If he cannot... Then nor will you, and you are in great danger out of Fundindel. What about Bess and Gowther? They'll be worried sick. Ah, I'm glad you think of them at last. Now perhaps you see the pain you cause by meddling in our world. Go with Albanac. I will call on Farmer Mossack and tell him you cannot come home until this matter is resolved. Come, Susan. Right, but where's Colin? Where are you taking me? No questions. Save your breath for running. Move! Ow! I know where we are. It's Stormy Point. How observant. 
stop now. Stand. Come on, my beauties. Come, come. It is I, Pelis. <laughs> That's the way. Cats. <laughs> Cats, he calls you. Cats, do you hear that, my tigers? These are Palos, boy, Palos from the wastes of Banog. What are they going to do? Oh, they will not eat you. That pleasure is already spoken for. But they and I will be your guides upon a journey. Now, my tigers, set him on his way. Left boy, take a left hand track. Don't you understand these gentle creatures here? I can't go any further. And neither do you have to. They are here. What is this place? Airwood. Airwood Hall and a fine sight in the moonlight, don't you agree? Tigers, lead him in. No, no, stay. What's happening? It's the a ruin. The moon has gone behind a cloud, that's all. But it's a ruin. Never. A trick of the light. Ah, here comes the moon again. You see, a splendid edifice. Perfect in all parts. Now, boy, move in with you. <laughs> <laughs> Lady, I have him. He is here. Ah, welcome. Our teeth have long rested seeking your flesh. You remember me? Oh. Yes. You're still in a place. Ah, that was long ago. I have another name. Saint. <laughs> you are the Morrigan. I ran. It was hopeless from the start. I just charged on blindly, came to a little rise, rushed up and whoops, no ground. Down I went, not far, but far enough. The mark flew out of my hand and careered away down the slope. It bounced into the air and just hung there, spinning like a small silver saucer, but getting bigger every second. Till the centre where my wrist had been was almost like a mouth of a tunnel, but friendlier. I ran into it. Susan. I'm Carrot. Where am I? Where we first met, many moons ago, on the island reads me. Here, take back the mark. Now sit with me. It is time you knew more of your place in these things. My place? Have I got one? Surely it's all up to you and Cadellin. When you put on the mark, you put on a destiny. And at this time, through you alone, can we work most surely. Now first, you must know all your danger rests with the Morrigan. The Morrigan? She is where I will send you, east of Alderley. She holds Colin. Oh, no! Yes. And she will use him to entrap you if she can. But listen, her power is only of the old moon. Yours is of the new. The Morrigan fears the new moon, and especially the one that is to come, the moon of Gomrath. For once upon a time, it made us the strongest in the world and may do so again. Before it comes, she will destroy you if she can. What am I to do? Take the war to her and hold her. If you succeed, she may never threaten us again. If you fail, she may grow beyond confining. What if I can't? There I can help you. Take this. It is called the Horn of Angalic. Blow it if all else is lost. But only then. I promise. Only if all else is lost. I promise. It was as if I was sinking. Down, down down into the dark. Then slowly, there were stars above me, and I was lying on the ground, a small silver horn at my side. Just by me was a little river. A road ran along it to a gateway. 
all in a steep valley, all somehow dead. I stood up. The gateway seemed to draw me. The gates were locked, rusty, but I climbed over. There was a drive. I followed it. Rhododendrons closed over me like a damp cave. Horrible. I came to a bridge over the river, then another. A figure stood beside it, holding a spear and shield. Stood very still. Statue? Man? Not quite. Something about it made my skin crawl. Definitely to be avoided. But I knew I had to go on. Only one way. Wade along the river. The banks were terribly steep. When I wanted to get out, I had a job. But I made it onto the drive again and round a bend. And there it was. An enormous house in the light of the waning moon. Windows blazing. But again, it was all sort of dead. Susan! Susan! Right, I know you're there. Then suddenly, there she was in a window, staring out. The Morrigan. Eyes like lasers, she was bound to see me. When she turned away, I crept down the drive. Why me, I thought. I don't know any magic. I'll not be much use by myself. I've got to find Cadellin. So, I've set off west along another bit of drive. Out of the awful rhododendrons, and up towards an empty gateway in a wall. Without a thought, I just marched through it. <coughs> there was this disgusting thing. Another like the one down by the bridge. No statue. Oh, no. Bald, shining head, ears pointed, slanting, glowing eyes, thin nose like a beak and covered with what looked like scales. He grabbed me with a nasty stringy arm and as he did so, the mark lit up like fire. He dropped. I ran for it and looking back I saw another of these things come after me. I thought, this is it. I've had it. But when I looked round... Death to you! Paludes weren't enough, they send us bodders too. Who's the car? Oh, who's the car? Ah, girl, we thought you were dead. How is it with you? All oh, right, thanks to you. But how did you get here? Tell me first how you did. Well... Ah, but don't just stand. There is more here than my sword can accomplish. We must fetch Cadellin. You can tell me as we go. And then I ran into the trees, absolutely sure it was the end of me. But you saved me, and here I am. Now, what about you? <laughs> there is little to tell. I soon lost Pelis, but I met a Palook. Then Pelis, like the insolent rogue he is, came back to Thundendelve and shouted through the gates that you should go with him tomorrow. Your bracelet in his care, or he would return Colin to us a little at a time. Well, while he was talking, I slipped out by Hollywell and followed him. Hey, wait. What can you see? Palooks. Many of them, and Boddocks too. I fear they may have outmaneuvered us. Uthaka was right. We were trapped. We ended up with our back to a 50-foot drop over a cliff and what looked like all the Boddocks and Paloogs in the world in front of us. They wouldn't come too near because of the mark of Folder, but then the Boddocks all had spears. But Uthaka was clever. He killed three of them, grabbed their spears and used their shields to catch the others they threw at him. For what seemed like a hundred hours, we kept them at bay. And then... Listen, devil. We may not see another sunrise, you and I, but perhaps there are worse places to die than shine. Is that where we are? Aye. Here your brother found the mutton. Here beneath our feet a hunter slept. The hunter? Oh! I've been hit! No, I haven't. Uthaka, the map's burning. I can read the writing on it. Then speak it! All it says is... Ramador! Down, girl! Down! Why down? Hide yourself.
thought it had never come. Where are we? Do you not know it? No. We are within a little way of Goldenstone. Oh, yeah. Then can we stop a minute? Not yet. Close by there is an elf road to Fundendel. It will be some shield to us. From what? The Morrigan. But surely... Better safe this way. Can I at least ask you something? Aye, so long as you keep the pace. Last night... When the wild hunt saved us. Well, what of it? They cut the bollocks and the paloves into little bits. Well, what else did you expect? They were all right, but they, they were laughing. They were enjoying it. That too. was the wild hunt, Susan. The wild hunt. That was Garanir we saw there, crimson to the waist, with strips of flesh and skin upon his antlers. When you call him, it is no children's magic. Be thankful rather you and I are not among the dead. <gasps> That's what I said. No, no. A shadow. Run. Run. I turned, and there she was on the other side of the field we'd just crossed. She held a long sword, and her right hand stretched towards us. It was clenched, except the little finger and the index, which she pointed at us like a pair of horns. My body felt like lead, and Utakar was absolutely rooted to the spot. Girl, come close. Touch me. Elfrod, there, in the trees. Somehow I got to him and managed to get hold of his wrist. Then he began to walk as if his legs were posts with a ton weight on each foot. But we made it to the elf road just as the Morrigan got to the edge of the wood. Could she stop us reaching for Nindel? No, do not let go yet. You have the power against her. Take my left hand, leave my sword arm free. Where is she? She was just behind us. She stopped. What's she doing? Why is she staring at the sky? She is not easy, beware. The wish of my heart to you, dwarf! And the wish of your heart, Callan, be on yon golden stone! don't understand Cadellin is why she vanished. She just told this curse at Utica, he turned it onto the golden stone, and she'd gone. Where was the moon? I didn't notice. Ah, well, I did, and it was on the point of setting. Could that have been the reason? Albanac, what do you say? Yeah, the Morrigan is not helpless when the moon is down. And what fear was on her that she could not stay? And where was she going? Where she came from, surely. Back to the great house that Susan saw. Ah, yes, the, the house. Where exactly does it stand? A little north of Shining Tor, in, in the pit of a valley. I know it. Erwood, Erwood Hall. But it is a ruin and has been these 50 years or more. No, it's not. It's as good as new. I saw it clearly in the moonlight. I saw the Morrigan at the window, and all the windows were lit up. Lit up? Cadellan, I begin to see this. Almanac, I see it perfectly. And it gives us hope. Listen. Listen, all of you. Erwood is indeed a ruin. The house as you've seen it, Susan, is but moon magic which the Morrigan has employed to build it. When the moon shines, it is there. But when the moon is set or clouded over, it is nothing but a heap of stones. Now, Susan, you say Colin is within the house, and you are right. He is there now. For it exists to those who have already entered it, whether the moon shines or no. The where is quite another matter. Then why don't we just go and get him? Because until the moon shines, there is no house for anyone to enter, not even the Morrigan, and she is not there. Can you be certain? Absolutely. She was at Golden Stone at Moonset. Hasten as she might, she could not possibly have gained the house before it disappeared. So Colin is within, and safe enough. Pellis will be with him. He will not harm him. He dare not. He must answer to the Morrigan. So, what must we do? You must put yourselves between her and the house while there is light. At moonrise, keep her from it until Colin is freed. We shall need help, then. There are too few of us. We must talk with Lord Atlendor. I am here. I have heard you. Now we should have known better than to talk where there are elves. Hush, Uthika. Lord Atlandor, will the Leos Alpha lend us aid in this? It is but for one night. 
So short a time. The moon magic is not our affair. And you, Albanac, are pledged to ride with us to the north three nights or no. My lord, is it to be said of your people that they will not fight the darkness where they find it? Aye, when it has to do with men and children of men. Meaning me and Colin, I suppose. You were quick enough to ask me for the mark when it suited you. Or maybe you never heard what happened to me after that. I heard, but I did not compel you. And I recall that you also have given pledges to us. Pledges? I haven't given you any pledges. And even if I had done, would you honestly expect me to keep them if the Morrigan gets Colin because you refuse to help? Very well. You shall have horsemen and myself to lead them. But if this affair is not finished by the third night... We understand. What you say is noble and will serve our needs. It is foolish and obtained by force. We meet before the house at sunset. So much for elves. But they will fight for us. That is what matters. Aye, because a girl shamed him. Nevertheless. But now we must make ready. Cadellan, will you ride with us? Not I. There is little I can do at Erwood, save put my life at risk. At such a time, my place is here to guard the sleepers. But what if the Morrigan should use her magic? You are not helpless there, Susan. You have the mark... And you have the horn of Anghalak. If it were otherwise, why should you complain? You sought this business of your own will. And as Cadellin looked at me, I remembered when Angharad had said, When you put on the mark, you put on a destiny. And I began to feel afraid. But there wasn't any time to think about that. The elves allowed Uthakar and me to borrow horses, and we rode behind Albanac, out of Fundindelf. As we left the gates, Cadellin gave his hand to Albanac, and they looked at one another as if... as if they were saying goodbye. Anyway, off we rode, and by midday we'd reached Erwood House. It was strange to see it in the daylight, all in ruins, but there wasn't any time for staring either. We tethered our horses and worked like galley slaves till it was dark. Well, Uthaka, have we done... The walls are clear of undergrowth on every side. Thus, the Morrigan cannot approach the house unseen. Also, the fires are piled and ready to be lit, so neither Bodrick nor Palug will have courage. Thus, we have done what we can. You should light the fires. I shall do it now. When will the Leos Alpha come? At any moment. What was that? Albanac, what's wrong? The howl of Bossa. What? It is of no importance. Here are the Leas Alpha now. Welcome, Lord Adlendor. Where is the Morrigan? Close for certain, though we have not seen her yet. Uthaka, what is the matter? I lit the fire. They flared, they burned, and then suddenly went out. Yet the fuel was dry. Kindle them again. We must have fire. How did it happen? It is the Morrigan's doing. Until the moon rises, the Morrigan has not the means to do more than this. She must wait for the moon to build her strength. Aye, and we must build our strength. Girl, you have the mark? Yes. Good. Come, stand here. Hold up your arm. Now, let each man touch the silver of the mark with his weapons. Which do you see this that we do? Here is bail for you. Here, plague to flesh. It is some hours to moonrise. Uthaka, how is it with the fires? <laughs> then guard them. At Lendor, we should take our places round where the house will be when the moon rises. Come, we are ready. How slowly the time went till moonrise. And when it did rise, there was cloud. Then suddenly the cloud broke. The moonlight touched the ruins. They shimmered as in a heat haze. And there was the house. Now to rescue Colin. Susan, come quick. Enter. Hurry. Now where? We must search. We searched room after room until we reached the last door of a corridor. Black design was painted on it. It is a witch brand. Come away. No, we've got to see inside. The room was empty. Well, more or less, there was a sort of pattern drawn on the floor. 
and in the middle of it stood a large, squat, long-necked bottle. It seemed to have been filled with boiling black ink, except there were two red dots of light inside it. I felt I absolutely had to pick it up. No! Let it alone! Come out! It is the Brolican! She has penned it! Could you not see? I couldn't help it! Aye. I will, then. Now where? What's that? Palace! He was halfway up another stairway with one door at the top of it. He reached it, fumbled with a lock, but Utica got to him before he opened it. Inch by inch, Utica drove him down the stair until I could run past and up. He cut at me, but missed. I reached the door and suddenly was afraid. Supposing... No. I turned the key and kicked the thing open. Inside was a sort of cell. Oh, boy, I thought you'd never get here. Colin, are you okay? I'm starving, otherwise I'm fine. Let's go. (laughs) Hey, what's going on? Come on! Uthika, you're not hurt, are you? Not I, but the rogue escaped me. What was the crash? He went out by a window and did not stop to open it. But if the Leos Alphar do not settle with him now, his life is charmed. Oh, Colin! Well met! Are you fit to run, lad? I think so. Then we, like honest folk, shall go out by the door. If I live to be 3,000, I'll never, never forget the scene from Tverwood Hall. There were the elves in a circle, calm as could be, holding off a horde of cats and goblins till they weakened and withdrew. But not for long, they charged again, and again the elves just kept their cool and drove them back. At least the Morrigan wasn't anywhere to be seen, thank goodness. But then Uthaka caught sight of Pelis, who had somehow survived, and he saw Red and rushed through enemy lines to get at him. Uthaka! Are you mad? Uthaka! What the hell is it with you? And Albanac put spurs into Melinlas, and the horse went soaring over the battle and off into the darkness. When he returned, Uthaka was on his back, but Albanac in front of him had fallen on the horse's neck, and Pelis's sword was sticking out of his ribs. At Lendor came, and he and Uthaka lifted Albanac out into the saddle and laid him on the ground out of harm's way. I had hoped it would not be so soon. Rest until the battle dies. Then you will be safe. I am safe already. It was the howl of Orza. When that calls, there is nothing to be done. My men shall tend him. Leave him with us. Colin, Susan, come away. Oh no! Who's the car? Do you hear me? Pelis. I hear you, traitor! What now? Will you not bring me back my sword? Hellas, son of our gods, hear me? Come now alone and claim your sword. See, it is here. Pelis rushed into the firelight, grabbed his sword out of the ground, and Uthakar just went for him. But Pelis was pretty cruel, while Uthakar was furious, and he slashed at Pelis like a maniac. You could see him getting tired, so suddenly he dropped his gun and Pelis hit him in the shoulder. It was the worst thing Pelis ever did, for himself, I mean. Uthakar jumped clean into the air, as if he'd been given an electric shock. And before Pelis could make out what was happening, Uthakar had come down on top of him and run his sword right through him and out the other side. It must have killed him on the spot. And as for Uthakar, he fell down in a dead faint. We ran to him and tried to bandage his wound. Did I kill? I'll see. Ah, <laughs> The wonder is then that I am living. Such rashness merits death. (gasps) But what of Albanac? I don't know. At the door! Is Albanac... Albanac is not here. You mean... He has gone to heal his wound. But he will come again, his kin are seldom away long. It is their destiny. And now we too shall go. I have kept my word. The boy is safe. We ride now. But wait! We can't go yet! And what about the Brolican? He's still in the house. One life has cost us thirty. It is enough. 
We ride. Oh, Sir Cad, did you hear that? The owls are going. C- can't you stop them? No. Indeed, I think the better of them for it. You must be joking. Listen to me. We have Colin safe, and that is what we came for. The brood of darkness is spent, and when she understands that, the Morrigan herself will come. And I, for one, have no desire to stop for that. Then I shall. You shall not. Help me to my feet. That's it. Now, I shall fetch my sword, and we shall ride out with the Leos Alfar. Colin, take Mullin, lass. It is what Albanac would have wished. We rode out of Irwood under the old moon. A few Borrocks held spears at us, and three more owls were dead before we could reach open ground. Soon the track of Shining Tall lay ahead of us, but I knew we were going the wrong way. Susan, why do you stop? We must go back. The Morrigan has got to be kept out of that house, or she'll release the Brolican. Who's coming with me? And then I'll go by myself. Susan! She'll turn back when she sees she's all alone. I think not. Maybe you're right. I'd better stop her. Come on, Melon Lass. What's the matter with you? Get up! Oh, we won't move! Let it be. Only she can do what has to be done. I rode. I was before the house. The few remaining Boddocks and Paludes screamed out at the sight of me and ran away. But not the Morrigan. Vermeus! Eslevor! Brangam! Beldor! A thing like a black flame flew out of her hand and towards me. The mark lit up. A word shone out of it. Brandos! It met the black flame and the black died away. Salibat! Retterim! The black flame grew again and pushed the white one back. There were more words on the mark and I repeated them. The whiteness grew, but not enough. And suddenly, it was black everywhere. And when I came to, I was lying on the ground. The Morrigan was standing with her back to me, facing the house. Vesticitium, consolatio, weni ad me vertat, crayon, crayon, crayon. She obviously thought I was dead. I got onto my hands and knees and crept towards the horse. Fiat! 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 Luckily, I'd just made it into the saddle, because the whole house literally burst. A huge black cloud came out of it, and in the cloud were two horribly familiar red pools. I rode off like a lunatic, but the brolican was everywhere. I lifted up the mark, but its silver went all dim. The blackness got inside my head. I couldn't see. I was drifting away. The horn. Mark, maiden, blow the horn of Angalak. All else is lost. explain what happened. I rode with everything I'd got, but the hunter let go of my horse, and he, the hunt, the shining ones, all went away from me, and I couldn't catch them. It was like waking from a dream, which you found everything your heart has ever longed for, into an empty world. Courage, child. It is not yet. It will be, but not yet. And suddenly, I was alone on the moor, with the night wind in my face. They all rode away together till they disappeared. And, if you ask me, if that's the old magic, Cadellin is never going to stop it now. In the Moon of Gumrath by Alan Garner. Susan was played by Jenny Luckraft, 
and Colin by Stephen Rendell. Cliff Howells was Uthaka, Tom Mannion Albanac, and Ronald Herdman at Lendor. Cadellin was played by Neville Barber, Gowther by Russell Dixon, Bess by Judith Barker and Ang Harrod, and The Morrigan by Joan Walker. Other parts were played by members of the cast. The Moon of Gamrath was dramatized by David Wade and directed in Manchester by Caroline Smith. And next week's drama will introduce us to